Hello. Hello. Do you have Prince Albert in a can? Uh, who is this? <laughs> is this pickle juice? Pickle juice is calling. Oh, I told you a million times, pickle juice. Pickle A juice. Oh wait. Oh, it's you. All right. I was I was prank calling you because of the prank episode oh, of the right. girl this weekend. Get oh, it? Tomorrow. Get it? Right. Exactly. You know, the Prince Albert in a can thing, do you think anyone ever used that as a prank? Because no one understands what that even means anymore. I know, it doesn't think, even mean anything anymore. I think, like, I think like you know, in Victorian era children, when the telephone was first invented, would call you, <laughs> ring, 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 hello, governor, <laughs> have you Prince Albert in a can? And like, what? Yes, I do. And they're like tin cans with a string in between. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that what they used in Victoria? <laughs> so, yeah, it's the about a prank war about a girl i personally kind of hate practical jokes and pranks well i like them when they're happening to other people <laughs> <laughs> they only seem to ever have in other people i don't even have any good prank stories well i see i've i found these friends that who are sort of big into practical jokes and i sort of made it very clear to them that like if you ever do any of this to me, I will never speak to you again. Because oh, man. I, Wait, did any of them ever pull one on you, even though you expressly No, they didn't. Them? Though I can tell you a story here, I'm, and I'll probably cut this out too, but I'll tell you a story about <laughs> when I was a kid. I once uh, had um, – I was on vacation somewhere with my family, and these this girl and her two – or I guess two guy friends and one girlfriend pretended that she liked me, and I mm -hmm. fell for it, and it was like the meanest thing anyone has ever done to me. That is really mean. Yeah. That's super mean. And they all thought it was hilarious, you know, and then... Who does that? I don't know. But I'll tell you... Okay, I'll tell you some of the good ones my friend has pulled on other people. Well, the one okay. is... They, actually, it's a couple people, and they sort of have a war. Or they have a prank war going on, actually, just like... Oh, know. there you go. So um, they tend to do it like when, when one group goes on vacation, the other group will strike. So, like, one once friend A came back and found in their house Polaroids of friend B licking glasses and silverware oh, <laughs> in in the house which they obviously had no idea which ones they were so they had to, you know wash every every glass and oh my god i was gonna say that's that's like even funnier if you kind of wait and hold the polaroids until after they've used their glasses oh, for a no, while. see that crosses the line that crosses the line into actual like a, that's unsanitary yeah um but the, then the other was going to do sort of a retaliatory prank that I that I actually stepped in and said you can't do this this is too mean they were going to put an ad in the paper <gasps> saying that this person was having an estate sale at their house Aww. like at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning and at first that's just kind of like haha you know you get a lot of people at your door at 7 a.m. on Saturday morning but I was like no I've been to estate sales I go to a lot of estate sales I know the type of people that go to those things <laughs> and if they put it on at seven o'clock they'll be there at six and they will be angry as hell that there isn't actually an estate sale though and there would have been 200 people in front of this yeah. person's house like people with, with... <laughs> these are the type of people that go and buy used toothbrushes at estate sales oh and come on now. I, i've witnessed it <laughs> and... oh, dude. Yeah, so i, I, I love I a good that estate one. sale i don't buy used toothbrushes i go to them too but i'm saying that these are the people <laughs> i see there yeah they would have been angry Wait, I've got one, and I can say this because you can't do it anymore, but okay. um, I have a friend who played this trick on his new girlfriend's ex-boyfriend who had been a jerk and deserved some sort of retribution. And uh, at the time, you could just go to the post office and fill out a change of address card, <laughs> and like all their mail would just disappear. It would just start going to this new address. <laughs> So oh my. he just like disappeared this dude's mail and then like signed him up for a bunch of like really raunchy magazines. The magazines, out. yeah. That was a big one in school. We used to fill out the magazine cards uh, in the library. Man. So let's play a prank on Nathan Stevenson. Okay. Pretend you want to go out with him. This will be great. <laughs> this will be hilarious. It'll be hilarious. We'll love it. <laughs> Do you imagine the talent department? They'd be like, um, <laughs> Seth, Mary, did you did you tell Nathan Stevenson that you wanted to go out with him, but it was just a joke? And you're like, please do oh. not play practical jokes on our <laughs> on the talent. <laughs> <laughs> the talent do not appreciate your practical jokes. All right, All right, let's just call him for real, Stevie. Because 
Um, when they were on Radio Free Roscoe, there were two Nathans. There was Nathan Carter and Nathan Stevenson, and so to keep them separated, they called him Stevie, and I think they called the other one just Carter. He was Robbie slash question mark, and now he's Griff, Marco, and Ellie, and Paige's new roommate on Degrassi. Yeah. All right, let's call him. Let's call Stevie. Hello? Hi, Nathan? Hi. Hi, it's Mary and Seth from the end.com. Hi, Nathan. Hello. How are you? Not too bad yourselves? Pretty good. It's been <laughs> so long. I don't know if you even remember, but like back in the day, I know I at least had lunch with you one time and met you in the office. It's been a long time, and we went to the we went to that restaurant just up the street around the corner. Yeah, totally. And, um, I remember. Kate, Kate Todd's mom was with us, and yep. there was a, a snafu with the waiter, and... I remember. I, I can even remember what I ate. <laughs> I, I remember it too because I wasn't invited. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, first of all, we had to tell you, like, ever since RFR went off the air, I still would get mail from kids and there was stuff on the message boards like, bring RFR back. Like, they missed it so much. Really? And back on the air and they're so excited. That's so cool. Yeah, totally. That's so cool. So, I mean... Are you psyched that people like <laughs> were still attached to it, even though? They oh man, it feels so good! It feels so good. I mean, that's what that's what every actor wants, right? To know that people like what you're doing, right? So it's right. oh, that's wicked. Totally. <laughs> and uh, and so like, what you been up to between Radio Free Rasco and and being on Degrassi now? Not a whole lot, just chilling. I mean, I ended up I filmed um I filmed a horror movie a couple years ago called Heartstopper. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. It's one of those things like I'd never gotten to do. I'd only really ever done Radio Free Roscoe and Degrassi type stuff. So to be able to do something completely different was a lot of fun. Did you die in it? <laughs> no. No, actually. Oh, okay. I, I was pretty excited. Wow. <laughs> we have this, me and me and all my friends have this running joke where, you know, the stigma, like the black guy's always the first one to die in movies. <laughs> I was like, I should get an Oscar. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> Surviving a horror movie. Oh, my God. Do you still like talk to Allie and Kate and the other Nathan? Or... Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, I mean, well, the other Nathan kind of just drops off the earth. Really? It's funny. Like we're still we're still close and everything, but like I swear he's a he's a spy. He's a secret agent because <laughs> he'll disappear for six months and then you'll get a phone call. It's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm in town. We should hang out. Oh my god. But like you know, you have no idea what he does. He's off doing his photography somewhere, and then he's just back. Awesome. <laughs> But yeah, no, other than that, I mean, Kate, me, uh, Kate and Allie and everybody, we try and hang out as much as possible. We're all busy because everybody's doing their own thing, right? But right. I mean, after working with them for so long on the show and for as often as we can, they're like a second family, you know what I mean? So you never really lose touch. Right. Yeah. And I think we can let out the secret that Kate shows up on Degrassi. Yes, she, she does. Did you guys yes, she does. run into each other on Degrassi set at all? or Not once. Yeah. Not once. Um, <laughs> one of the other characters from RFR, she was in a couple episodes as Veronica, Paula Brancati. <laughs> oh! Um, is, is on the show. And it's funny because me and Paula Brancati are pretty much joined at the hip. We um we we did my one of my very first things this show Blobheads she was the lead on, I ended up being a series regular in one of the other shows she was a lead on called Dark Oracle, she was in she was in Radio Free Roscoe. Now we're working together on like Degrassi. Like I couldn't believe it when I first walked in at the orientation and she was sitting right there. I was like, no way. <laughs> You guys have like shadow parallel careers. Oh yeah, oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and I saw Janelle Williams has been on Degrassi like a bunch of different times. Yeah, it's all before me though. Yeah, right. yeah. I haven't seen Janelle in forever. I keep running into her brother Colin, but I haven't run into Janelle in a long time. Janelle being Kim Carlisle for yes. Him. Wait, what? What is the what is the orientation? What is that? What what happens there? <gasps> oh, it was. I'm not sure if it was called an orientation. It was more just like a meet and greet. Oh, but see. like it was the first day it was the first day where um everybody just the the Degrassi producers and writers and directors just brought all the new cast members in to meet all the old cast members. Wait, wait. Do you get like a packet and you play ice breaking games? <laughs> you know what your locker is. It was it was more just they gave us Timbit donuts and bottles of water. All right. But um <laughs> 
Do all the, the do all the like old time cast members stand in one corner of the room, and all the new cast members stand in the other corner of the room and sort of look at their feet and say, "Oh." Believe it or not, that. we had assigned seating. Oh um, my we're god! Scattered around this big circular table. <laughs> oh yeah, it was funny though, because like here everybody else is walking in, they don't know everybody, they're doing the introductions. I've known everybody, half that set has the same agent as me. Half oh. the Degrassi cast has the same agent as me, so I've known almost everybody on that cast since day one. Right. I remember um, Aubrey Graham's character, um, Jimmy, was actually down to just he and I in the very first year that show came out. No really? Way. So yeah, I remember. I remember speaking to Aubrey uh, a couple months after that uh, all panned out, and I was like, "Hey, what's going on? So how'd that work out?" And the rest is history. <laughs> wow. What's it? Yeah. So okay, I guess you've already kind of told us like what it's like to sort of insert yourself on the Degrassi set. But I mean, was there anyone who was particularly friendly, or is there any sort of behind the scenes stuff you can share with us? Well, it's always it's always kind of weird going on to a new set, especially one that's been going on for as long as Degrassi, just because the cast and crew are so, like, meshed together. They've known each other for so long, and they have their... Everybody's got their inside jokes, and everybody knows each other inside and out, right? right? But at the same time, I mean, anyone who knows me knows I'm not a very shy person <laughs> i i don't i don't go in expecting to know everything and everybody right away but i try my best to fit in as soon as possible i tell jokes i laugh and knowing as many people as i did didn't make it all that hard right right but it was funny because um you've got adamo um stacy and lauren who are all so like so close and they have all these inside jokes and everything like that so me getting there for the first like three different days I was on set they'd say something and laugh and I'd just kind of be like <laughs> <laughs> totally yeah <laughs> which is so perfect because you were like the new roommate who doesn't know pretty much doing. it worked out I, I was able to incorporate that <laughs> I was kind of wondering if you and like Kate and Ray and or Ray Allie and yeah, Nathan. Did you when like the show and when R F R ended? Did you guys like decide what happened to your characters afterwards? <laughs> like, <laughs> we um we kind of just had these like little jokes. They made no sense whatsoever. Like it was completely <laughs> out of left field. Like I think at one point I was joking around like Robbie becomes a superhero just with no powers. Uh-huh. <laughs> he just he just becomes completely delusional and becomes like Radio Man, right, okay, and right. goes and and goes fight and goes and fights censorship tyranny or something like that. That would like, have been a good spinoff. <laughs> would have been one way to go. I could have done it. Had fun with something like that. But no, it was just completely ridiculousness like that. You should uh, you should catch up on the reruns now and uh, sort of remind yourself of your of your younger years and oh man because it's so funny seeing you I mean well it's like watching Degrassi and seeing the Degrassi cast in the first season and how much they've changed but you know seeing you in the those early um, seasons of Radio Free Roscoe and then looking at you now it's just like wow yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't even wow especially <laughs> especially like the first like I think maybe five or eight episodes of season one when I still had that like tooth prosthesis in my mouth, I don't know what? if you guys know about no. that. No, what's <laughs> that's a little that's a little piece of scattered trivia that a lot of people don't know. Back then, um, before I did my whole braces thing, mm -hmm. I had like big time fangs like up, and <laughs> my teeth were horrible. And I remember when I first got RFR, the only way I was going to get the role was if they found some way to hide that so I, my my smile looked normal. And I went to, um, they sent me to a special special effects um, guy who makes, like, prosthetic vampire teeth and stuff like that. And literally just had him make a piece that snapped over my teeth to look like real teeth. To <laughs> look wow. like Hillary Duff. Chocolate. Oh, man, it was bad. And the worst thing is, like, if you go back and watch it now, kn like, knowing that, having that knowledge in your head, I look like a caveman. <laughs> <laughs> my, my top lip is bulging out. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. It hurts. I, I cannot watch the first, like, eight episodes. And that affects your speech, which is kind of an important tool for an actor. It took some getting used to, to say the least. It took some getting used to. Every now and then you'll catch, like, a, this is, um, <laughs> you're listening to Radio Free Roscoe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, God. That's important. That is. That's very important trivia to know and know. I'm sure. Yeah, totally. It's it's funny because every now and then, every now and then, I'll just be bored and I'll go on. I'll go online and check out these little like art, random RFR facts. 
<laughs> that people have picked up. And there's some things I don't even think I've spoken about that people know. And it's wow. weird. Wow. Oh, that's it's creepy. weird. That's very that creepy. Is. Yeah. Maybe you're in a real life horror movie. <laughs> oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay because you don't die. You survive. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I'm the phenom. <laughs> so uh, what else is up in your life? Like, what do you, what's the typical, what are you doing this weekend? Nothing exciting. I'm working. Uh, I'm working when I'm not uh, auditioning and filming. I'm working as a server at Jack Astor's. Oh, wow. Yeah. So people yeah. come and uh, get a hamburger from you or what? <laughs> Every now and then. It's like, it's weird. It, it took me a while because I've, I've been doing the server thing for a little for a couple of years now and it's funny because when I first started after the whole Radio Free Roscoe thing I was so iffy about starting it because how I was figured how weird was it going to be if someone walked up to me and they were like hey aren't you the guy right right and I go yeah uh, what, what can I get you to drink <laughs> you know what I mean like awkward totally. but at the right. same time it happened once or twice and then after that I was like it's really not that big a deal yeah that's... I mean here I am I'm just like everybody else, I'm getting a job, and I, I like my job, so I enjoy myself. Everybody's got to pay and... the bills, man. Exactly. I actually think exactly. that, yeah, I think more uh, actors and celebrities should do that sort of thing because, you know, it would really cut down on the whole paparazzi celebrity gossip, you know, <laughs> madhouse that we're living in now because if they're, totally. if they're just, you know, serving you, you know, your fries at uh, – it suddenly brings them down for the long time. It's like Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you imagine going to McDonald's and getting your fries from Britney Spears? <laughs> right. And I think that if that was happening, the MetLife blimp would not circle every day. After about a week, they'd give up and then they'd go home and that would be the end of it. So I think that's Yeah, yeah. totally. 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 All right. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. No problem. And it's it's been so nice to see you again or talk to you again at least. Right. Totally. <laughs> I'm sure we'll meet again eventually. I hope so. We'll have some more grilled cheese at whatever that restaurant was. <laughs> totally. Awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That was cool. See, it's like the old days, except in the old days we didn't have the podcast, so we never got to, like, you you got to meet these guys because you had lunch with them and I was, wasn't was invited because they <laughs> kept me chained to my desk or something. But it was like, you know, we didn't, we didn't have the podcast, so we didn't get to call up these people every so often and just, like, you know, shoot the breeze with them. So I've never, you know, I've never met Ali McAdam. I've never spoken to Kay Todd. This is the first time I've ever spoken to Nathan Stevenson. So it's, it's not. Yeah, and I don't think we were even doing IM interviews back then. Like, I think we were just straight up, like, I had that one lunch with them and, like, tried to write down everything I remembered. Right, exactly. And that was it. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's like we're, we're reigniting <laughs> old bridges. No, that's not it's right. It's like <laughs> a time machine and we went back and brought him to our new technologically advanced world and and like interfaced with him right it's exactly like that i'm not very bright today seth i'm sorry my word skills are like not on point all right maybe we should take that as a cue to end this okay have a good weekend thank you mary you too okay bye <laughs> see ya bye <laughs>